<laughs> and John, yes. Paul, and Marshall are here. Rick and Philip are not here. And we also have Council uh, Liaison Sean McCoy here as well. Roll call, please. Um, motion to approve the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Aye. Approval agenda complete. Uh, approval of previous month's minutes from January 22nd. Two, two minor corrections, I think, Dan. Okay. Uh, on the first page, on the golf professionals report, I think the second column is 2023 rounds, not revenues. And item D, just try to the, the second column should be rounds, not revenues. Yeah, it's not a dollar. It's not a dollar number. It's a Good. It's number of rounds. Yep. And then on item D, uh, I think the meeting was delayed until I think that money was the 26th, not the 22nd. Yes, if they Minor changes, but in yeah, the interest exactly. of that, we we'll see. Exactly. I think that ought to be delayed. Was item three? Item D. D. Item D would have been Monday, the twenty sixth. So can we have a motion to make those corrections? I I have a motion to make the corrections. I move that the notice be approved as correct. A second. All in favor.
Year to date, we are at uh, 475,000, which is 102,000 over the prior years. Uh, rounds were up 2,457. I did run the numbers. Is Maine looking that same field ball too? Maine's looking great. I ran the numbers through yesterday. Uh, we're about <coughs> 24,000 ahead of here a month today. So, yeah, it's going very good. Um, anyway, any questions? Two, three. Thank you. All right, for uh, sunset uh, year to date uh, revenue, 153,144, about 30,000 uh, <coughs> ahead of your prior. And then uh, rounds, we are uh, 2,066 ahead last year uh, in rounds. Um, yeah, same thing. It's, it's just, it's, it's great. It's, it's, so, it's so busy. It's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> it's actually, days go by too quick, it feels like sometimes. Not enough hours in the day at this point. So I haven't, even, I haven't been in town since the weather, <clears throat> too? Um, I mean, last, uh, if you look at last month for sunset, I was actually down uh, from year prior. Uh, I was also closed one extra day from last year. And if you average that out, it's 125 rounds uh, per day at 25 days open. Um, so if I was open one more day, I would have exceeded last year's rounds for that month. And that's the revenue would have been uh, ahead of last, last year um, for that month as well. But yes, it's, it's, it's 100% better. Uh, I'll be honest, uh, and I don't know if Sam would agree, but uh, at least so far, this the first beginning of this month, the weather pattern was weird. It's like a cold wind, the one we get when it's not the days. It's not the normal kind of May warm winds that start to bring the warm temps in for May, June, July. It was kind of cold for a few of those days. That, that, I think mean, that, that hurt it, but we are still ahead of last, the last May. It's, I think last year we had all that rain, though. That's true, yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Especially when we were open. Well, from the books, we were, you had to close January, February, almost every day. And that's another reason. Yeah, two years ahead is the Yeah, two years in a row. Two years in a row, we lost January, February. Yeah. We went 1,500 rounds at sunset for those two months. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, that's killer. Oh, it is. Honestly. In the, the short hours of the those days. Well, yeah. I mean, you, know, <laughs> you, you only have a phase each month. Yeah, your phase will go solid on a fall day. And it's like, <clears> well, <throat> yeah, the short hours will be over. But it's gone really the horses spent the past. Greens, uh, I heard that you were phenomenal over the weekend. Uh, the sunset, I know, is phenomenal. Uh, <coughs> same thing with here. They're fast. And yeah. All three golf courses are. So I have just a couple of things I'd like to, to say during this part, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, first off, I'd like to introduce Ben Wagner. Ben is the Recreation and Golf Superintendent, and you're going to start seeing him around a little bit more uh, as uh, Ben takes on his full role. Uh, not just uh, recreation, but uh, uh, starting to see more in, in the golf world as, as well. Hi, everybody. Hello. So, are you over all of Florida's recreation? Mm -hmm. the rest? Okay. Yeah, I'm looking forward to starting to grow in this fall for the next, for the next year. That's the big things of recreation last year. That's really pulled me in that direction. Uh, I look forward to this and keep uh, you know all of you. So, thank you for having me here. And I am a golfer. <laughs> These hard courses. And then the other thing, there is an envelope uh, uh, at each one of your places. Uh, the, the city had provided some passes for you all, thanking you for your service on the board. And, and uh, again, I would like to echo that. Thank you for uh, your time that uh, you put in with the uh, <coughs> golf uh,
So, old business. Um, motion to approve the 2024 agenda calendar items. Did anybody have any comments or questions? I think this is kind of a good summary of what we reviewed in January when we met. Well, I make motion we can make the agenda at Any second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, motion carried. Then <clears throat> new business. Yay, Jeff, I get to turn it over to you. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. so, <laughs> so, Ben is going to uh, first cover uh, Ukraine's uh, bond projects. And then I'll talk a little bit uh, about uh, uh, Twin all right, so I did a PowerPoint for everybody here, and it started out from day one when we uh, first started the whole project, leveling it to, it's, it, was for, it was for last month, so there's a lot that's happened, which I'll be glad to share next time, but it takes us up to about, about a month ago, so I'll just go through, I got a lot of pictures, and I'll just talk pretty quickly about them, but if you guys have any questions about any part of it, go ahead, feel free to ask, and uh, I'd love to tell you about it. So, out with the old. So you'll see one of our neighbors got us this picture from his roof. We didn't get like a really good before picture. So that's kind of up there. That's where we had all our stuff. Kind of our east side of our lot here. And then this is where we were in and out every day. So, so keep these pictures in your head and you'll see a drastic transformation. This was inside of our, our house there. It looks worse than it was because this was on our moving day <laughs> when we were moving out, so it wasn't really this messy. It's but just like I remember. That's all. Awesome. <laughs> <No, no. laughs> Maybe some of the time. <laughs> Looks loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's how it was when he did not know you were coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so this is the room where we would meet every morning. You see our job board here. This was our break room where we do safety meetings. Guys would have lunch. And then this the one over there was our office area, so that's where we'd have our a desk, and mine was on the other side of there, and then there was one more around the corner in there. That was the old like living room area. There was a fireplace, all of that. And <laughs> so, so yeah, that was the, there. So this is when we started our asbestos removal. This is the part that slowed us down about a month and a half, something like that. So we started on 11-3. We, we were supposed to start on like the end of September, and the asbestos removal company lost their license, this and that, they went back and forth. They let it expire is what happened and then they didn't renew it. So <clears throat> the day they actually started was 11-3. So you see they showed up, they have to um, put this plastic around, nothing can go in there. This was after they ripped everything out of there. Um, this was where the kitchen was. So there used to be a sink and an island right here, so they, they take it down to pretty much nothing before they go in there and actually start to remove the asbestos. So this is what it looks like. We were able to go in there after they were done and they got everything out. They took it up, as you can see, down to the studs. There was no dust, there was no dirt. They completely gutted everything that was in there. So this area, this room back here was the old break room and that was a restroom and this Gosh, gotcha. oh, this was the break room too. This is facing the other way out there. So that's the door going out. But you can see when they built this old house, or when they added on to the old house, they just kind of left the old walls and just kind of built on the outside of it. So what part of the house actually had this rest? This was all of it. Any, any part that they had, like tile, all the glue had it, all the tile had it. Um, the ceiling, yep, the popcorn ceilings had it. So when they got into the kitchen, they, it was a raised kitchen, and we didn't realize that when they went, so then they found different levels. So then it had, took longer as they found different levels of it. So, so once they finished up, we opened it up to the fire department for them to do some training. So you'll see they kind of did their thing. They put a bunch of holes in the wall. They cut holes in the roof for areas that they would enter. There's definitely areas they want to cut. They try to go in between the studs 
up there, so they were practicing that up there. Um, I got a quick video. Uh, if I know how to start it, I probably have to have a mouse. Um, sorry, I'll play it next time. Anybody know how I would play it? Right click? You have to hold it down. That's great. Oh. No. Oh, there it goes. So this is what they do going into a fire. <clears throat> they make fake smoke. They, they fill this whole house with fake smoke, and you'll see it starting to come out. You kind of see it right there. Yeah, there you go. And it wasn't just one group, there were multiple. Yeah, yeah. These guys, this crew came one day, and then uh, when they, the next crew came on, and they do their four or five days, they came on the next day and cut holes and did all their stuff. It was like a Sunday when they came back. Kind of a video of, of kind of what they go through and, and then they kind of clear it out. But <laughs> yeah, so here's the damage they did. They cut doors, they just really work on real life stuff instead of at their training facility. Um, and then comes the, de the demolition on, on 1212. They did they, this is all the piles of the house, the lean to that was there. The only bad part about it is they didn't even tell us when they started to tear it down. So we've been in that place 25 years when our mechanic was driving out to Sandstone where he works for me. He said, hey, they flattened the house already. I was like, you got to be kidding. The one thing I wanted to see would go down and didn't get to quite see it. So so that's what that is. They, and then they cleared the site, leveled the site. And then 1220, we started digging footers. These are all the footers. That they're digging. This is for the maintenance building, the one that's on the west side. <clears throat> and then concrete goes into the footers. You don't realize how big they are until you see them here. I mean, this is all underground now. So, so yeah, these are probably I think this is a seven by four. And then all the rebar, all the math those guys have to do to get all that stuff in the right spot. <clears throat> a few more. You can see all the rebar in the walls here so this this building is very stout um, underground utilities this is the sewer stuff that this will go into the building this one's going into the building also all these are down in the south end of our facility um, then the water this goes all the way out to aerial court out to the east and then connects to where they subbed it out for whatever development came came next so you can see those are about 15 feet deep into the ground. And then this is all the plumbing. So once again, a lot of math, all these guys have to get it all in the right spots. And uh, sometimes they miss as we found it out earlier, or later, I guess. <laughs> so the first slab we poured here, this is the slab of the maintenance building. You see all the, all the rebar in there, the plastic coating they put under the dirt. And of course it started to rain this day. So these guys, they worked through it and they did a, a heck of a job, but we were uh, a little nervous about it, but it actually came out really good. So there's the slab of our maintenance building there. Um, this was a big one for us to be able to keep our facility, or for us to keep going. We were able to get our fuel hooked up down there. So all winter we had to go to Twin Peaks or Sunset and fill up gas cans and come back and forth. Luckily, you know, December through March-ish, so we're not too busy, so we didn't have to go too often, but getting this hooked up, we're able to drive up here and, and fuel up and make it a little bit more efficient. So, so here the structure starts to go up on March 18th. Um, <clears throat> this is the structure to the maintenance building. This is taken from the, the south side looking north. Um, right there, this is from the um, east looking west. You can see the mountains back there. And, and then that's the same thing looking <clears throat> to the north. 
And then here's our material storage bin. So we have four bins here that we'll be able to put a couple types of sand, pea gravel, and then maybe some waste off the course or topsoil, whatever we're needing at that time. It'll all stay contained in these bins as before we just had piles laid out there and the wind would blow it. And we could never get down to the bottom because if you get down the bottom and you're scooping up rocks and gravel and all that, so you're always wasting about six inches of each pile you get. So now we're way more efficient be able to uh, to use all we buy. So, But you'll see the footers for all these that they poured, once again, very, very huge, very well built, um, and it's going to be awesome. So now they're starting to uh, put up the walls, the, they call this the Skyliner that they put in here. They put this there so they can put the insulation on top of that. And then you can see here they're, they're putting the insulation here and then they put the panels on the roof. And uh, away we go. So that's a short version. Like I said, there's a, a lot more that's happened in the last, I guess it's almost been two months now. So yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're moving along. Still, uh, why don't you just describe where, where you're at? Is, I mean, you're starting to build walls. Of, oh yeah, inside the uh, maintenance building, they pretty much got the whole thing framed out. So they got the frames, the wall frames of all the offices, the break room. In the mechanics area, we have uh, two bathrooms there. He has a grinding room, parts room, and office. And then we have a little compressor room in there. So. So yeah, everything's formed. They should start doing drywall next week. Start putting all that up so we can really see the rooms. And then they've got everything graded in the middle. We're supposed to we we're supposed to start asphalting today, but he didn't want to start doing maybe all the rain coming. So probably Wednesday or Thursday we'll start the asphalt. And, and yeah, it's it's coming. <laughs> the equipment building's got three sides all together and they're starting to work on the front. So that one will go a lot faster because there's not as much detail on the inside as the as the maintenance building. So we're gonna have a funny question. <clears throat> How did you determine the size? Um we we went and looked at a bunch of well two or three different facilities and we kind of really like the way the one at TBC looks up there, TBC Colorado and we kind of went off of what they had, their size and we our architects did use some measurements, you know, for our equipment building, how we're going to fit all the stuff inside, and and then you know it all ultimately came down to the dollar, you know, too. Yeah, right. If it was up to me, I would have built it <laughs> <laughs> about ten thousand square feet. Yeah, building lost two or three holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fourteen would have been a part three. <laughs> when do you expect to be in there? Hopefully mid August or early September. So. According to the contract, they have to be substantially complete by August 16th, or they start uh, getting liquidated damages. So they are moving pretty fast, and considering you know some of the stops and goes that we've had, which are pretty common. You know, some of the steel didn't arrive on time, and so that put us behind. And then some of those heavy snows and rains made it very difficult with. How muddy the site was, um, but like Dan said, with the asphalt coming in, uh, there really shouldn't be any more weather days because pretty much everything will be indoors you know, here here shortly. So, and and what what we'll do is once we're up and running and everything set, we'll probably move one of the meetings out there so you all have an opportunity to go. Across and, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, nice little break room. It's not huge or anything. It's about half this size, but it'll be enough for all of us to get in there, and then we can tour it. You know, I'll tell everybody, show everybody the new digs. So, any other questions? I like to talk about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and then I just want to give a kind of a quick update about the irrigation uh, project here. Um, Ryan, I gave the night off because he, he's been working some pretty lengthy uh, hours trying to get water going back for the course. And if you've been golfing here, you'll see that it's kind of dry on the, the back nine. But uh, I was here 
it was about 1, 1 15 this afternoon and there was actually water spraying mm -hmm. on that end still got a few weeks that they have to address beforehand but uh, we're getting really close uh, which means the front nine is is virtually done all they have left to do <coughs> is to go back in and patch up and reseed in the, in the areas where they dug up uh, and then the company will leave a crew here during the summer to uh, do work on that saw and seating and some smaller things and then they'll return sometime uh, mid to late September and really start uh, working on the, the back nine to be able to be completely done by the end of the year and we really didn't want them working during the summer months uh, they, you know, if you've been out here at all it's been difficult at times because they've really been trying to get some things wrapped up and and, and then the other thing is that we had uh, really one change order uh, and that was to dredge the ponds and that was about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do the two ponds and that was going to be way higher because originally we wanted to move the materials from the golf course and uh, of course we didn't have enough money or resources to do that so we found areas to uh, fill in leave the materials here and then uh, they will reshape uh, those areas where they they dumped all the, the stuff up the dredging materials they'll do that uh, kind of the last thing and we feel like it will it will add some character to the golf course as, as well uh, but you know there there were places where the, the ponds were only a foot deep and we needed at least three to be able to carry the amount of water the, the lake to the east is much deeper than the one to the west but uh, they, they seem very uh, happy with the amount of water that uh, we're able to hold now and we're really headed in, in a good direction. Each one of the heads out on the golf course will ultimately be able to be programmed individually. So if you're getting some water, too much water in one area, you can turn that head down. And if you're not getting enough uh, water in another area, you'll be able to turn it, turn it up. The other thing that will be really big here is to be able to water the greens and the mounds, we only had one head. So to get enough water on the greens, it always uh, overwatered the, the, the mounds around the, the greens. So you have really wet areas at the bottom of, of the green areas. And what we believe that will be a, a big change that uh, will really improve the experience for, for the golfers here. Uh, Ryan will be back next next time we meet and he will have a PowerPoint much like what uh, Dan had uh, done tonight. But again, he, he, uh, he had a pretty rough uh, weekend trying to uh, fix fix uh, <coughs> leaks and then some of the heads got turned the wrong way and we were spraying some of the neighbor's houses so uh, he was having to do some damage control with the neighbors. Uh, I will tell you that those were, were not city staff's problems or, or fault. Uh, the company had originally gone in along number two and set all of those heads. And what happened was, as a part of, of turning on the system, they had to remove some of the insides of the heads to be able to flush all the junk out of the uh, system so that we weren't putting all that uh, into the new pumps and motors. And when they put them back in, the code <coughs> they didn't adjust them for the direction they were supposed to go. So we had four heads on Friday night that went on and they were expecting the neighbors. No, I, I, I think we were fortunate that they weren't set to run a long time. Uh, Brian did a great job working with one of the neighbors that uh, um, went over and he had some uh, wood in his backyard that uh, he was building a, a back porch and helped him spread the wood out to get it to dry out. But uh, things ultimately will, will be okay. And he's gone over and 
verify that those are all set to the correct direction. So, uh, I can't can't thank uh, Dan and and Ryan enough for the work. It's you know it's it's hard enough to be doing your real job, but also having to do some pretty significant uh, projects on top of that. Uh, and, and then also we have Sharice Montgomery at U Creek, who is a project manager for the city, and she's doing a lot of support uh, in managing that project. Ryan is doing all of it on his own here. So uh, again, thank you to, to Dan and Ryan. More, a lot more uh, pictures and we're getting really close, so uh, uh, we said you Creek uh, next time. We I think the, the last time I played here is I think about a week ago, the ponds were dry. I don't know if they're right now. No, they're full. No. But there must have been hundreds of ponds. Yeah. <laughs> did, did anybody go out there and clean them out up or not? Or no, 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 there are two. I don't know if you guys have a point to take them out of there. There's, there's, no, they're wherever they got dumped. If you want to go dig through them, no, 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 no. no. I'm serious. Oh my God! Look at all the balls up there. But it was, it was so. I mean, they can't move some of the materials um, to re reform the areas because they're still so wet and mucky that you wouldn't want to go into there. It's just all silt, <laughs> muck, and it, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure some of them and have like a, a roller I, I mean when I used to work here for Sam when Sam was here when I was in high school I remember seeing the guys with carts and this like a when you see the ball pick on the range a giant version of that just goes in the water and it goes back and forth it's Essentially the same thing, but there's companies that come up with that. You know, this you, you you don't want most of the ones that dug out. It's funny to see them all, you know. And it wasn't even one spot. Okay. It was just that it was spread all yeah. over the yeah. one. Stand for one. So the next item is discuss survey and potential questions. One of the things that the board had discussed at the January meeting was uh, considering doing some type of survey in your packet and then at uh, your spot uh, this evening we had some sample survey questions. Wanted to see number one what you really want to um, hear from the golfers and number two if any of these questions uh, would work for you or if you have suggestions or you want us to go back and Bring you some more next time. Another thing I have is number three, it says on a scale of one to ten, <coughs> how would you rate the course maintenance? Is it any good or bad? I mean, we'll get to that. Yeah, so yeah. Usually you are going to put it to the best. Yeah. Like and and these are just for discussion. I'm not even correct. It's not to the credit. And I and the one thing I would say is I don't know that. We want to do too many questions because if we have too many, nobody's going to take the time. So maybe maybe we do multiple sets where um, throughout the, the first part of the summer we ask a, a set of five questions, and maybe the, the last half of the summer we do another five. <clears throat> uh, on on two and uh, on six, what I would probably do is uh, is talk about. Uh, maybe get it so that they can hit, you know, maybe a couple of them, like, is it the uh, uh, quality of the green or some other thing like that? Don't make them have to, to write it out. Make them, uh, you know, go through what you know are the things that people typically... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. and yeah. They, they, can, they can pick three, whatever. And then on six, the same thing, kind of the same thing. Uh, it just seems to me that that, that you'll get people to fill the survey out if you don't, if you, if I'm a teacher and with teachers, teachers were always like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so they, so then if you have to type, uh, if you have to type out your answer uh, or write out your answer, you're probably not going to get uh, uh, people to finish it. And so I just think that, that, you know, my experience with students and, the, and with uh, adults is just, Better to better to have. You don't want to lead them. 
but you also want to give them uh, uh, things that you know are the things that people are going to say uh, over the course of this. You know, what what would be related here? They're, are they going to talk about electric beers? Great. <laughs> those are not. The, that's not a deciding um, But uh, those are the those are the things that people I think like to. Uh, as they're going to steer towards, you know, the, the availability of, of uh, you know, the driving range and the availability of the putting uh, uh, range. That sort of thing seems to be the sort of thing that people are looking for. The same thing would be true with respect to questions 11 and 12. I mean, yeah. It says, what were the strong points, what were the weak points in the course? Yes. Right. Yeah, one I kind of came up with was, why did you choose playing this course? And like, uh, we're saying is I had A, price, B, location, C, amenities, D, course points. Yeah, those types of things would make perfect sense. Right, so you got four choices and, and pick those, something, yeah. whatever, you're giving them an option, and you're starting to see why people come to the course rather than get each smattering of any answer, because then you now have no way to really quantify why they would come. You want to limit your options, and more than likely one of those four or some four choices are going to be what you're picking your name percentage as to what people are showing up course. Well, and you'll also be able to tell, if you uh, break up, you'll also be able to tell maybe who did uh, answer and said, Definitely send it for them again to get that. Uh, that may get them to fill the second part that you said. The other thing I am is going to make it, I think, a lot shorter. Yeah, yeah. You know, four or five questions at best. Yeah. What do you expect to learn from the question, how is the weather on the day you play? I'm just giving samples. I didn't, I'm not yeah. really saying. I, I, so I'm not sure what that would, what information that would provide for that. It could enjoy the, the enjoyability of game of course, because if you have a cold and windy day, you're more likely to not give very good answers compared exactly. to a nice 70 degree, beautiful sunshiny day. Yeah, yeah, you're not too, too hot or anything like right, that. Right, because yeah. that's going to dictate conditions, how people play, and how they have to dress, how their Taste comfort. Of Piece of play, there's a lot of things that come into it. Yes. So I was going to say, I would leave off the question of how do you feel about pace of play because everybody's going to have a different opinion depending on how that day went out there. I mean, that's we've already had that discussion with the marshallers. And, okay. well, I, I'll be honest, I, I mentioned some of this kind of, that kind of stuff up at our meetings, mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it's all about constructive criticism, too. You know, we don't want all positive. Like it, but we'll take the constructive criticism and we'll work through and see what we can do better. You need to know if it's yeah. if the pace of play isn't there, and that's one reason so many might say they don't want to come back. Uh, so yesterday I was at Fox helping out with scoring for a little bit because they asked me to come by, and I'm sitting there, and one of the members came in, I was up behind the front counter, and he's like, man. It's an eye-opening experience having a five and a half hour round of Fox Hill. It's usually Fox is very. You know, it's three and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I was a member there for four yeah. years. And when I worked three and a half, three and a half is an eighteen. And it's long and that you're on the course too long. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And the members yeah. pace themselves at that point. When I worked there, no way for variance. It was the same way. If you're playing four hours to four fifteen, you've got guys that are. You better get them off the course. Yeah, private club is really different. Totally, it's like this oh, yeah. is because, because they don't go off the tea right. time sheet for the most part. That where they're got it because they're getting the money every month in <laughs> yeah. monthly right. fees. So it's not a revenue driven. How Correct. much can we fill the tea sheet? It's we are getting our money, our month, mm -hmm. our money every month because they're paying four hundred twenty dollars a month to play the course. And totally and that, you know, also, the public points you have, you have players all of those. Right. Mm -hmm. We do the country club as well, but yeah, it's still an expectation. Mm -hmm. 
we get brand new golfers in the game in five dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So they've paid their seventy plus dollars and they they want to be out there as long as they want compared to somebody that's a good golfer that's pushing them the whole time. Well, I mean, and, and if you were holding things up, you would let people just go through because there's always caps. It's not like it's back to back to back in, in the private sector yeah. comparative to in the on the public courses. Yeah. Most time, you don't get an option to say, "Go ahead and play through," because there's another one right behind them and another one and another one ahead of them. So yeah. most players yeah. know the authentic too, and know the way that the group through. But it doesn't matter because they're going to hold the next group up, and that so. Again, it's a difference of, and and I've been a marshal at sunset, and I've seen it where yes, doesn't matter how much you want to try and push somebody, they don't care. I paid my seventy dollars, and I'm going to take my time, and it doesn't matter. And you are not going to make me change. Period. And three and a half dollars, that's no fun either. That's true. That's true. That. That's true. You got four guys. It's like. You'd be surprised to be four of the most you know, course those guys because they know that course inside and out. And they're playing side money games and everything else. They're playing and they don't even line up us from these guys. It's like it's like it's <laughs> it's all about how fast that I play opposed to No, it's not even that that you know, course plays fast. Fox Hill plays extremely fast. It, it is because it is so how much was your problem? The biggest right. thing is, is where you um, get stuck with carpet and walking in the greens. That's the sort of thing. We were done at 515, but we played through a twosome that was slower than us. Makes sense. So, every reason you guys can go faster. <laughs> and then a foursome let us play through. And it was a par three, and I just looked at my partner and I was like, let's just drive through it. So we skipped a hole. So that's why we were in Otherwise, I'd still be on the course because they were playing slower today. I'm certain to tell people to expect slow golf, you won't be disappointed. Every time you go out and expect to play in this time frame, every single time, you'll be disappointed with your round. Okay. I mean, you lose one awesome. ball, you're looking for it. That's. Yeah. You know. John knows they're all on these balls. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, what I was going to say, which was interesting, um, <coughs> playing today, I wasn't there when they went through the rules, but we talked about new players, people who aren't familiar with golf, or the ones who think it's, you know, you go out and drink a taste of beer on the first half or the second half. Does anyone ever kind of, or is there kind of like a cheat sheet rules, like the pace of play pace, pace yourself, like so nine holes should be two hours. We have the pace of play card in all three golf courses. Um, it has etiquette on one side and the pace of play card on the other side. And the USGA does not rate us every year. I know at sunset it's, it's rated at two and two hours, two hours and fifteen minutes <coughs> is the average pace of play. Now. Those cards are on the on the steering wheel of the golf cart. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's got ready golf, ready golf rules, tips, you know, yeah. Yeah. and if you creep the fourth hole as the clock, it says you should be here at one hour. Yeah. 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 And yeah. There's yeah. there's other things that say what pieces. Yeah, yeah. I, had a one, I, I just kind of wondered uh, after the uh, East Act, the real beginners type of course shut down. What have you seen? I mean, primarily, I think over the sunset. In regards to this whole thing here, to I, here think, too. I think it's been kind of split between here at Twin and at Sunset. I don't think you've gotten as many of the Haystack uh, kind of no. players. Because it's too long. Yeah, the first, <laughs> the, well, it's further it's distance. distance too. Well, it's further distance. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know there's I a, lot, a lot of respect to that. that. That first week was kind of an a educational period. For a lot of players that only would play this side. I mean, I have guys, I was there on Mondays, it's my usual day that I'm not in the office, but uh, Bill Sullivan was <laughs> literally had a full sheet of tee times, and these guys were just standing on the tee box and ready to hit. 
He's like, I don't know who these guys are. And he went out there and they're like, yeah, we're just gonna see off and come in and pay when we're done. Like, do it is that. Yeah. He's like, no, that's not how it works here. I can't, I, I can't get you guys out for a little while. So hang out, I'll squeeze you in the sheet. That thing, but yeah, you, you still see it, but you know, it, everyone's, it's not, I don't have any clients. How, how long have they been out? <coughs> Third year? Uh, there's this is all there. Third year? Yeah. yeah. It was 21. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It was like last year. Yeah. So some of these questions where people were saying, like, you would have, like, <coughs> suggestion lists. Yeah. Like, what's your favorite or what do you appreciate most? But you could also then be like, what was the thing that you didn't like about the course? And it, Case of play might be one of the choices under that instead of saying how do you feel about case of play because I'm not sure I would actually have a question I would ask for a negative. But I mean you always have an opening like in the head of the last thing saying any opening to questions or comments. How how you distribute this through QR codes and that yeah, I think that would be the so after we decide what the actual questions will be, we'll work with the comms team and they'll help us decide how that to do that. And then they'll actually help uh, us tally everything. Yeah, just one thought. You're talking about shortening, which I agree with completely. And you might think about putting your questions in two different kinds of areas and for lack of better terms, one survey might deal with course condition, which is one through seven on, on this survey sheet. Another one, for lack of a better term, might be course enjoyability, which would be things like strong points, weak points, how do you feel about the pace of play, uh, any amenities you'd like to see, affordability, etc. Split it in those two areas, and it would give you specific things you're looking for in each case. So how, how about if at our June meeting, we'll bring two samples for each one of the, of the surveys so that you can give your final yes or no, and then right after that, we'll be able to start getting it out. We'll work with the comms team on help fine tune the, the questions and how we ask them as well. I would say, yeah, and maybe uh, make the two survey, two, set, two different sets of questions, about seven questions, and that's about it. Once you get past seven, people lose interest, and they're less likely to respond. Uh, if you only ask three or four questions, you're probably not getting a true story. Um, but again, especially the drop down types of some things. If you can't complete it in five minutes, you're probably not going to get a good response. No. And I would think that the, um, the data that the we can play, the weather, those are just questions you need to know so you know what kind of. What's going on? What was going on? <laughs> it's kind of your header. So you that's, know. yeah, the like part of your main. What's the main? Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> what, yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. Because if it's raining and it's cold or it's windy. It's Saturday versus Monday. Exactly. Yeah. And those again could all be dropped down to pick Monday through Sunday. Sunday pick rainy, pick sunny, pick. But I would whatever. consider those part of the, the number of questions. Those are like, questions. what's there? Yeah. What's, you know, like, your conditions of, say, of yeah. it's for the survey. Okay. All right. Good feedback. I will, I will give that back to, to you all at our. For our junior meeting, you can do this all by yourself. Dan is not here tonight, so <laughs> she knows. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have no. Plus, we have our communication team within the city, and they will help us with this as well. So, you know, I need to play with people I don't know a lot. And I always tell them on the board and toward the end, oh, how do you like it? Did you like it? And I'm like, I can tell you the three things that I get time and time again. One, it's close by. Two, the price is right. And three, it's easy to quest. 
that it is. And, uh, and it doesn't matter what age, age group they are. I mean, I get that time and time again. They were, they were working on sunset. I get the problem with the, with the bathrooms, you know. <laughs> and here it was water. But, uh, <coughs> you know, they come from Erie. You know, they come from Italy. They come from Malabu. And, uh, yeah, not too many from Boulder, but most of all, they got from Boulder. But this is probably seen from the trips here. Yeah, right, right, right. 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 Yes, as a matter of fact, the flight's been so long. And, uh, but that's just sort of overall, I can tell you that, but, that, so somewhere in there, there ought to be somewhere where they can answer that. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else on survey? So the, the final thing is an uh, uh, item that Brian and I are dealing with, uh, where many people at Sunset are interested in having some type of memorial <coughs> at the golf course. And we are uh, working with four people right now that will ultimately give a bench on every one of the, the holes at the golf course. Wow. And so we need to come up with some type of other ideas uh, where other benches and trees of how people can, um, you know, have, have their loved one memorialized or recognized at the golf course. And just kind of wanted to get the board's feeling of, you know, do you have any suggestions on how we do that? One of the things that I would say is, you know, I, we, we certainly don't want the golf course to become, you know, this downer place. I, I, I think we want to make sure that it's done well and and that you, you, you just, again, aren't, aren't overwhelmed with the sorrow in, in some cases. So, any thoughts? Yeah. So what if you were put up a flagstone wall, monument thing, and depending on how much they're donating as a memorial, there are different levels on that. So you can put a plaque honoring them that they're at a different level, and you identify that as a header. Uh, you give $100 a year in some category, you give $500 in a different category. So there's different levels of patron, patron or whatever, however you want to classify. It's usually a one-time thing. I understand. That's why I said it's um, so. So if I, let's just say for example, <coughs> what you're suggesting is a thousand dollars for a bigger plaque, medium plaque. Not necessarily just different levels, and you call out the different levels. And so depending on where it is, is where they fall on that wall. So a hundred dollar gets you on the, the entry level, whatever. Five hundred gets you on a, a patron level, and. A, Thousand gets you on an executive level or whatever you're going to call it. The part where the eagle levels. Yeah, whatever. Exactly. So my, my question comes to the, the so a bench, right? Adds the ability. I mean, it, it adds to the golf course. Yes. Someone's able to sit and we, you know, the pace of playing is slow, kind of thing. Like it adds. Is there something that would add to the golf course? So what they're trying to do is not necessarily bring it down. They're trying to give back yeah. in honor. Yeah. So like, I'm thinking water dog or, you know, which may not be the case, but something that we add to it. And I hate to say I don't remember what each course looks like, but it's nice to, you know, when it spells out what the whole looks like. For the people who haven't played it, you know, all that stuff. I mean, I can so, imagine. Are you talking about like the T stones? Where it shows that? The T stones we currently have, um, have there's, they have uh, sponsors on them that purchased that stone. Okay. Uh, so, so, so okay. Sorry, kind of what you're okay. saying, yeah. kind of going along with it when I was talking about the wall, that money that they're giving. Maybe that's put into a fund and then that's used to upgrade something in the clubhouse. So it's not just the money that they're giving and the plaque, but it's going to something, maybe some upgrade, maybe 
carts for people or whatever that uh, help buy more handicapped carts or something that the course could use, something that would help signify for their remembrance of being at the course. Not, not just, hey, we get, we get our name put on a plaque and that's it. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know that any of the course is needed, but like a bridge or just something that enhances the beauty of the course, the user's um, experience versus just making it some kind of stone that we put something on the back. So, yeah. so for me, the clubhouse would be pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I want my, I want to do a bricks. I think yeah. there's going to be cloud house in TPC. There's a design. Yeah, you can put the bricks on. The yeah. name's on. Yeah. 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 Are you adding to those? No. Those were people that helped build or donated. Yeah, yeah, I don't know exactly. I don't remember yeah. where it was, but I, I remember seeing. Yeah, but there is. There's a whole yeah. There's some size. Some areas some walk up to the nations in the yeah. Yeah, something to help start it. Yeah, I don't remember exactly, but I mean, I moved here shortly after it was built, so I don't remember yeah. exactly. Anybody else have any thoughts? Just an aside. Uh, I'm on the H H O U and one of the things we got out and got a grant from from the city of Long Island was. One of the things you're going to get is a bitch. You will not believe what you go into trying to find a bitch. I think it is, and I know I, was, I wondered about that. It's really neat. I guess the only one we got on Sunset was at seven. Can't remember any others. You run the most every We have a bench on every single hole, on except for on number four, and now there's one or two. Oh, my uh, yeah, well, so we have stone benches, like actual stone place benches. And yeah, flight. So you're talking about, yeah, the flight tunnel is different. I'm oh. thinking, like, just like the movable benches. Well, well um, that's the other issue. Yeah, we are they going to be movable or not movable? <laughs> yeah. 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 The how you put a band down the line. And, yeah. and yeah. they're very sturdy. Oh, so yeah. They don't they move yeah. Kind of yeah. 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 How what kind of letter you're going to have on it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the city has a Process for that. Yeah. Oh. That has to Jeff has to approve for, the, oh. for those. But yeah. like I said, we, we you should sign up. See that from our yeah. Right. It's a yeah. loving memory or yep. whatever. Hey, you guys yeah. have suggestions? The only the one that I mentioned, you know, at the end of on Homer Nine, we finish the path that goes and curves back up. Right. There's an open space there. I, I suggest maybe putting a sign there as a thank you message to the players that. Playing, but having that be used in the board, or, um, I've had people suggest it in the brick, like the way that you um, somehow, some way, but uh, it's really nowhere to add bricks. So, I, mean, I, I, I agree that you just consolidate it to one place because yeah. otherwise you start to make it. How many benches can you use? You know, it's <laughs> well, yeah. or trees yeah. or anything yeah. else. Or you and it's, um, it's or if you put a stone marker somewhere that you know that uh, it's not it's so it's swimming or whatever. Yeah. And you start pointing it. One of the biggest issues you run into potentially with putting plaques, say, out of the golf course. Like, say someone wants to put uh, buy a 200 yard marker plaque. And put it out there in loving memory of this and do 200 yards out with a play on the channel. Well, how are they going to see it without paying the play? Because if they walk out there during the course of mm -hmm. business, then they're just interrupting play and mm -hmm. possibly get hurt. So that's someone has mentioned that to me in the past. Um, people I mean, walk out to their benches? Yeah, right now on number nine, uh, there's a book of flowers laid out for Norma. Yes. Because they're usually by a street or yeah. one and out because it's like year on yeah. five or seven yeah. uh, a year. The only one that would be the inconvenient would be for six. Yeah. 
the right in the center, or for instance, but well, you can drive down yeah. to there, but it's yeah. not terrible. Yeah. So I mean, there are a lot that it's yeah. relatively short to walk to and from off the course. Yeah. Okay, good comments, thank you. We'll uh, bring this back and give you what we find out uh, as we move through the year. I don't think there are any items from the staff. Okay. <laughs> so, any items from the board this evening? Bob well, says I really have enjoyed the feedback that you guys have. I, I think this board is uh, active, interested, and uh, I like the discussion. And I'm just happy to be here to support you again. Please, on this back to the council, we have a meeting tomorrow uh, that we uh, talk ahead of time. It's a pre session, and uh, I think they're, they're always interested in finding out hey, the, you know, the irrigation system is working well and, and getting back on track. And, and we've got some great numbers so far for. Uh, number of rounds and everything, so we're starting to, you know, they like to hear that type of stuff, and, they, and the fact that the uh, building is getting uh, put in, I, I don't want to kind of know. Well, I try, I try. Speaking of number of rounds, what would be full capacity? Like, like, how many rounds? Four per month. I mean, four per month. Or, yeah. On the, on our T sheets, I mean, the T sheets are pretty uh, kind of built. I don't mean. Oh, it's five. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, three hundred is a is a huge day in Green. Yeah. <laughs> It's on the day of the year, too, yes. because you're not going to get that in the center. It's a long day, and I'll tell everybody how much of the hours of sunlight you have, you know, that's right. what I thought. But um, when I uh, worked at Apple and Golf Course back in 1988, 89, 90, we used to do over 60,000 around there, which is incredible. Every day was back. Right now, I, I feel like any 18 hole course that does 40,000, 42 to 45 is very, very good. And we're pushing out 45 number now. Yeah. So yeah, I think we're um, we're up there. It's, it's been great. Well, my my question, of course, comes from my being back in flying and watching the capacity of like how fast. But there's only so much you can do. So I was just wondering, like, if you guys did Well, since so we also talk about pace of flight and mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah, one of the things we did during COVID to spread people out is we went to 10 minute uh, tea times. And we've kept that at the golf courses just because it's helped with the pace of play. And it gives the pros some flexibility that if something happens where we didn't get a, a, a round recorded that they were coming, it gives them some flexibility to plug people in. But, I don't know that we 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 could build more capacity if we went back to seven or eight minute rounds, but there's problems that go along with if, if we were building seven eight minute rounds again, we would be we would be pushing probably forty thousand rounds a year. We have a lot of pissed off customers too. Yeah, that was my it's just my question is because it sounds like I mean weather has been favorable, so you guys are way up, but there's going to be a point where you hit. I mean, each, day, each day we're, we're fluctuating and adding to these times when we know we're at so like, on certain days I'm I'm running. My senior the senior center that plays on on uh, Friday mornings, I have them schedule their tea times on a separate, like they do their, their own tea times. I tell them do eight minute intervals. I do ten minute intervals on the tea sheet, but if you do eight minute intervals, I can still work it in there and that's still in my head usually before my first one public for their designated end time. Yeah. It just allows certain days where I can push more and other days, weekends usually I can uh, expect <coughs> to show up on their tea time. It's definitely a much better player experience than 10 minute intervals. <clears throat> but at 10 o'clock on a Saturday, 
and you get to show up, you got a 20 minute gap now that you could have booked that time 20 times over. So those are the bummers. Every now and then we'll, we'll, we'll throw a squeeze in here and there to kind of offset those no-shows, and it's never a problem. As we, if we ever get to the point where capacity, it becomes an issue, I think one of the things we would consider is you need to prepay. If you're a no-show, you don't get all your money back. But I think we're <coughs> close to being ready to do that. But that's one of the things that prevents some of the things that uh, Sam just described. Well, those shows used to be a huge issue. Yes. But now we do a lot of prepays. People who book online, they're prepaid. And when they call in, they need a credit card number. So that just scares them enough that they call and cancel it. So that problem has gotten a lot better than it used to be. But we still get a few now and then, and um, we're going to be fine. Like you book a hotel or an airline, you know, say, sorry. And it's kind of funny that the golf is not, it's, it's not. <laughs> That's a cultural thing. So, yeah. that, you know, there's, there's a, that, that's a, a, sometimes a generational thing too, I think. Yeah. Well, I think that it's becoming more accepted that if you signed up, you're going to lose something. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree there. I don't know that you want to take the whole green fee, but there should be some $15 fee or whatever that you're helping to cover for lack of consideration. You took a time and some of those could be. We refund people that pre book if they cancel, we, we refund every time, no questions asked, even if it's the day of. Yeah. Somebody pre pays for four, two show up, give them a refund. A refund the two. The, the time where we have issues is when people select the, the hot time, which is the Golf Now discount, and Golf Now collects it. And we don't get that money. Sometimes people have had difficulty getting that right if the weather's bad. Or <laughs> yeah, they golf down the golf pretty, pretty hard line on those. Mm -hmm. They make it perfectly clear these are non refundable Correct. as they go through the whole checkout process. Um, so they they expect it. Absolutely. <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes no, no, I, 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 I mean, I've done some of those one of those as well, me. so I know that yeah, if, if I book it as a hot deal, it's not refundable, and you don't expect to see the money if you decide not to show up, right? unless it's weather conducive, and then they say the course has to keep it perfect. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. a little bit different, but no, that's that's the fair answer. Yep. It's, it should be just real easy for everybody to get money back just because I didn't really show it up. Right. Oh, were you going to say something? No. Nope. I'm making a motion to be adjourned. Thanks, man. All in favor? Aye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.